It's Mateo, right? Okay. Father, thank you so much for our time together this morning. <laughs> thank you just to be learners together on this journey with Chalmers, um, to bring faith and finances to our own community. And just even looking at the things that we've looked at this past week on spent and places that maybe were unfamiliar for us to go. God, help us to have a really uh, healthy conversation this morning as we uh, share with one another how our day is. And thank you for the blessing of Mateo with us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, forgive me, guys. This, this is a little unexpected, oh. so he'll be here for a couple minutes. But I, I think... This week was probably a fun week for all of us, and I say that because I hopefully one it was a, a challenging week, but one that was also uh, I think insightful uh, to the communities we we may go into. But I think my, our first question today is is what did you learn about the differences between oral and print culture? Did something stand out? Was something completely new? Was something you know affirmed that you already knew? I think I'll, I'll start from our bottom right, if you guys don't mind, but uh, Tabitha, if you don't mind, uh, I'll ask you the question first, is the difference between oral and print culture? And, and sure. What I don't know if you guys can hear me okay. My computer is having problems, so I'm on my phone. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Yes, we can. Um, also, Carlos, never apologize for your children. It brings delight to us to see Mateo. I mean, he is absolutely gorgeous. So even if he wasn't, we would still be happy. <laughs> Thanks guys, I appreciate that having that. Um, I guess for me, I do, I'm not sure that I think there are separate categories like black and white. I think we all are on the continuum of that. But I think it's really helpful to try to think of um, other cultures having different pieces of it more strongly than maybe your own culture. Um, and so I guess part of the reason why I don't want to see them as totally different is because I don't want to evaluate them, eva you know, like add a value. This one is better, this one's not. Um, but we have to, as humans, we need pegs to hang our hats on. And those, I think they're really helpful categories. Um, but one of the things I said in a comment a couple days ago was, we're all wired for story. That's how humans are. And that's how ancient humans were. And so that completely makes sense that that is what we should all be leaning into. Um, you know, whether we're dealing with a print culture or not, we all have that story culture part. So that, I thought that was cool to work through. Yeah, and I think you're so right. I think, you know, we're, we're not meant to necessarily evaluate one over the other um, and say this one's better than the other one. Um, one thing I will say, you know, coming from a predominantly Hispanic culture, uh, most of my family's not very good with time and they're very good at, at telling you uh, a little bit more details than maybe some folks may have time for. Right. Uh, and so it, it, I, I don't think it, I'd say, uh, you know, that one's valued over the other, but I think one is, if you will, appropriate in certain settings or, or at least is accepted in a different way. Uh, and I think, and I, and I only say that because uh, I think it's what I go through, right, in professional culture and, and also we'll find some these specific differences in our classrooms. Right, I think folks, like, you know, some of them are going to be really good at, hey, I'm going to ask you this question, but I'm going to answer this question shortly. But let me add this semi related story to get the point. And I, and I bring that up because I think that's something that, that we have to affirm. We have to find absolutely let them know, like, we're valued, your contribution valued, but how do we, how do we wrangle that in? Um, right, and so there's, we can, we'll keep talking about that, but I think you bring up a great point. There is not one culture better than the other. I think that's great. So that's I think also that my perspective is heavily influenced by the fact that my my oldest child, who's a senior in high school, 
we learned he had learning disabilities um, when he was, we didn't really fully understand it till he was entering sixth grade. And that has reshaped everything for us. He has dyslexia and dysgraphia, and we didn't know all through middle school. So the poor kid still has trauma from that. Um, but for me, I'm so sensitive now that we all learn in different ways. And the more we can push into the type of learning that unites all of us, the better. I can, oh, I was trying to unmute myself. I was trying to unmute Lisa. I'm sorry about that, Lisa. Uh, absolutely. And I'm glad you guys got, were able to figure that out, right? And so thank you for, for sharing that, Tabitha. I'm glad even in, in knowing the, the dyslexia and the such, I think you guys find the resources around that. Um, I can ask maybe Phyllis and John, you know, what, what did you guys learn about oral and print culture this week or what stood out to you? Well, for me, it was um, how one is just as important as the other. Without storytelling, we wouldn't have print. <laughs> I mean, it's important to preserve those stories. Um, even as it mentioned, Jesus was the greatest storyteller, but without print, we wouldn't know. And I know how diluted stories get if you play telephone at all, how stories can change over the years and print really helps to preserve the truth of a story. Um, but also telling stories is, is an important way as, as we read with the last piece about the uh, Inuit Indians to get your point across without um, really fingering somebody without degrading them, I guess. That's what I got about you. That's good, fellas. John? Yeah, and I, I guess uh, as I look at the print culture and the oral culture, uh, I sort of looked at how that affects me personally. And I, I mean, I'm definitely a print cultural kind of person. When I look down the list of attributes, uh, I fit most of those. And I don't fit very well into the oral culture. <clears throat> uh, so, I mean, it's good for me to recognize that, especially as we work with other people who may come from a completely different perspective than I, uh, so that I can do a better job of understanding that oral side of things and, and the, the way other people think, think of things and how they communicate. Uh, because my nature is kind of to get a little impatient if the communication isn't fairly uh, straightforward and to the point. In fact, you know, as uh, I think Tabitha mentioned, that uh, her children have differences, and we have we have four daughters, and one of them is is uh, uh, very verbal and uh, wanting to communicate. And I've always gotten impatient with her because I it seems like it always takes her forever to get to uh, the point of what she's trying to communicate. So I'm <laughs> I'm always impatient with that. So. Anyway, I, uh, for me, I really need to uh, be sensitive to that oral side because because it uh, seems foreign to me. So, and thanks for sharing that, John. I think both of you guys bring up great points, especially you know as people are different, and I think they they're going to find value. And in, in, I'd say, in a way, our communication is a good way for us to build relationships with one another. All right. And I think people will start to build trust one way or the other. Uh, but I, at the same time, I guess I'd say finding a good balance between both, especially in a classroom. Because uh, I, I, I mean, even in our group, you guys are, are very insightful and I, you guys are a chatty bunch and I appreciate it. And I think one, that's the environment that's created here. And I want you guys to be well, to feel welcome to share. Um, but also, like Marsh and I were like, oh man, we could cut loo we could cut loose on one question and spend our whole hour on this. But I think there's more that we'd like to learn from you guys. Um, so, but thanks for sharing that, guys. Um, Susan, may I ask you the same question here? Susan. You're muted, Susan.
sorry about that. Um, that was a concept I've never really considered. The print and oral culture difference uh, ex explains a lot of uh, why um, we have not seen a lot of, with, with particular individuals that we've tried to help, we've seen very little progress. And that just was very helpful for me to consider that we've never considered that. I think I've made, I make a lot of assumptions when I, you know, am working with people that, that there is a similar way of seeing the world and there's not. And so um, th this was a really helpful lesson to me in that sense. It makes me think about what Jesus did though. You know, he, when he walked the earth, he, he told stories that helped to relate to the person that he was speaking to, but drew them to the, you know, the nature of God and that kind of thing. So um, it's, it's not a new concept by any means, but it's very helpful. And um, I'm, I, I thought it was just a really cool thing. One of the, another thing that I think about when we tell stories, we, most of us live in families where we tell stories. There, there are family stories that you share over and over and over again. My kids still love to hear them. It doesn't matter how many times I've told these stories, they still love to hear them. Uh, my adult children, you know. So um, anyway, I just found that to be a really helpful lesson. So I love it. I think a couple of you guys have mentioned Jesus already as, as this amazing storyteller, right? And the power of stories, in especially in learning lessons. Um, I think Chalmers does a really good job of wrapping stories into it. But at the same time, I think your own personal stories are going to have so much value in these classrooms. It's like you're, you're sharing your family stories passed on through generations. Mm -hmm. I think in a similar way, you know, you'll, you'll find some of that power in a, in a facilitation inside of a classroom. Sharing that. Um, may I ask Jody, same question here. So oh, I... I'd like to just say ditto to a lot of what I've heard so far. Um, I appreciate it just the, again, um, making me more aware that people have different learning styles. Um, I think the one other thing that I would add is I think it's a good reminder to those that are in the position of instructing others, the responsibility that we will have to try to adapt our learning styles to meet the needs of the learners instead of expecting everyone to learn the same way that we need to keep in mind and remember that people do um, benefit from different learning styles and different teaching methods. And so to me, it was a good reminder that way that um, that's a responsibility as someone that may be in the role of an instructor to adapt how we're sharing information and trying to relay it. Um, it, it also makes me think too of uh, trying to find common ground with people when there may be something that um, you're not agreeing on. And a lot of times through those stories, helping someone understand your perspective or understand someone else's perspective, I think it's a, a helpful way to do it instead of just, you know, throwing data in a print form or checklist, which I'm a lover of checklists and lists, but um, that doesn't always work to get your point across. So I appreciated the, the discussion of that. Totally. And I, I think you, I think that common ground you talk about, I think is really important in, in building trust. Um, I, I think it's a great point because, you know, and, and Marsha may share this and some of you guys have experienced this in, in maybe other groups, the one, um, where uh, I think someone works up maybe the courage or the energy to share something. And I, I've seen it happen where like it, it wasn't totally relevant and the facilitator may just completely ignore or go past that person and that person's just won't be in for the rest of the, the next 11 weeks or whatever it is um, and so but at the same time we're, we're finding balance in the classroom right and so I think this common ground piece that you share Jody like again I'll share my family very oral culture I think myself as I've immersed myself in more of a western world context I'm a very print culture I'm a list person I'm a calendar person I will plan my life three months ahead of time to avoid the stress of not having anything planned and my family was like let's hang out tomorrow well I'm busy for the next three days and all that to say is there, there's these differences in cultures you will experience in in your classroom so I think this common ground you talk about I think is very important so thanks for sharing that um Lisa can I ask you the same question yes you can um and working with real estate agents for the last 25 years, we 
I've always used a combination, and I think it's very helpful for one, all agents are such different individuals. There's times I see that you've got to use stats and numbers you know, when you're talking with agents or anybody. And then there's role-playing time and there's storytelling time. And as long as you mix all that in, it just seems to make a lot of difference. Certain ones you can see react to different situations. And so in that, reading the role-playing, um, you know, I've done a lot of role-playing and we make it fun. So they're laughing and they remember those role-plays. At one point I was a father in a uh, foster care situation. I was a father and my wife was a big burly bearded guy, you know, so we even saw them and haven't seen them in 15 years. And my husband said, isn't that the guy you were married to? Not, you know, yeah, that's him. So, you know, those kind of things stick with you. And that's what I think would be important. And in these is making it fun, role playing, putting different people in different positions. That they can take it and remember as a story or an event. And you key in on something very powerful is humor, right? And, you know, finances is a very sensitive topic for some. And I think it's very hurtful to even bring some of that up. But humor kind of bridges that. And I, again, I don't, you guys already know I'm a big fan of Chalmers and the Faith and Finances program. But humor is something they do very well, especially in their role playing. But yeah, thank, thanks for sharing that, Lisa. Uh, Patty, I'm going to ask you this, this question as well. Okay. Um, I, I think pretty much so many of you touched on everything. The only thing that I can add to it, first of all, um, both you, Carlos, and John reminded me of uh, the reality of my personality and how it can um, be a, a positive. I love adult learners. I love finding different ways to teach. Um, also, though, John, I'm with you. I have a little trouble when people are verbose <laughs> and I'm not good at that classroom management thing where you maintain the respect of the person who is talking while still moving to accomplish what you need to. And that is going to be a challenge. Um, and I could see as you were talking, I was trying to do some problem solving. Sorry, that's one of my other flaws is I can't just listen. I'm working on it. Um, but I could see where the allies would be hugely beneficial there because they could help read the room and um, help me to understand when I need to leave more space for those discussions and when I need to move things on. So I appreciate everything that's been said before. Thank you. Absolutely. You know that uh, you do you guys ever like at church have some, someone's on stage and they have the mic and you just see the pastor kind of walk towards them or he's in the background just saying, amen, amen, right? And I think that you guys will develop some of those cues as well in your classrooms for hopefully your speaker or whoever has that open mic, you know, to, to and not that you will be passing around a mic, right, but to, to hopefully cut people off um, in, in not such a negative way. I think, again, this, this facilitation style, uh, it goes a little bit longer than if you were just teaching from stage and you had a PowerPoint that you were following. But I think this kind of learning environment is, is very crucial for adult learners. So thanks for sharing that, Patty. Um, but I guess I, I, I think this discussion, really good, guys. I think let's let's keep sharing, let's keep learning together. But I think Marsha, if you want to take us to, to this next day here. Yeah, that was really good discussion. I want to say yeah and yeah and yeah, because I get so excited about this stuff. It's so good. It's so good to um, see a lot of you wrote about it, just kind of were in between. I mean, there's a balance between the two and all. So um, excuse me, my daughter is downstairs here. So in case you hear noise in the background, she will be done in a minute. So anyway, we'd like to um, just kind of hear your experience now of maybe um, if you guys did anything, you went to a new place. I know I was reading some of your posts of places that you've been in the past um, or, um, or, and or about spent and how that experience was for you. 
So, um, Susan, let's start with you. Um, I did not do the going to a new place, um, but I did do the um, spent. I thought that was a phenomenal activity. I thought that was whoever created that. That is really, um, it, it really just puts you in the place of having to make decisions and really seeing face to face quickly with what those decisions, the impact and the, the um, implications of all of those decisions that, that you have to make as a single mom. And so um, I loved that. And I can see how that would be a helpful tool to use to train people um, to walk with others in an empathetic way. So. Yeah, it's really good. I know it is those implications, the choices that come where we don't even think about that. Right. Like you're saying, to really yeah. be able to use them as a tool. It's really good. Yeah. yeah. Great word. Um, okay, Tabitha, how about you? Yeah, I would just echo a lot of what Susan's just said. I mean, having to click on tell my kid not to go to the birthday party because I knew I couldn't afford to get the gift. Having to click on let my pet suffer, which if you're not a pet person, that probably doesn't, I'm a pet, I'm a dog person. <laughs> and I clicked it because I'm like, nope, if I have to make it through this month and mm -hmm. um, whether or not to give, you know, the generosity. So even though I, I work for the Chalmers Center and I'm kind of constantly in this stuff, to really go through and play that, that little simple <laughs> game was revelatory. Mm -hmm. It was a great exercise. Yeah. And then I just used a story from my past and I wrote about it on the thing. And, you know, I've had many experiences like that. Um, and hopefully they help me with empathy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And that was such a great story that you wrote. I encourage you all, if you have not, um, done that part of the exercise to go back and look at that. Maybe you've had your own experience from the past of being in a new place, but Tabitha, there was others that wrote about that too, but Tabitha really had an incredible story in a Chicago grocery store that she and her husband stepped into. And, and just you sharing about the empathy. I mean, it touched my heart to read your story and what that must be like for a person of color in a white, in the white community and all too, majority white. So go back and read that. That was really impactful. Thank you for that. Yeah, and Patty had a good, I think it was Patty that had one of the unlabeled, nothing had prices on it. And that was really cool too. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Patty, do you wanna share? I have to tell you, I was a little convicted because um, Tabitha, your story was full of empathy and full of seeing things from other people's perspective. And I took a little while getting there. I, I first had to evaluate why I was feeling things from my perspective. You know, why was I feeling like I was being taken? I was in a Somali grocery store because I needed some ingredients that you can't find at our local store. And I've been in them before, but I've never actually gone through with the purchase because it really was confusing to me. So that was good for me too, to realize that people that are entering into what I might consider our world in these faith and finance courses, this might not be the first time they've tried it, but there's a lot of barriers. And no one in that store saw that things not being labeled were a barrier to me because that was their culture. Um, but I was like, somebody's going to take advantage of me. And, you know, this guy looked like he was making up the numbers and I'd ask him how much things cost. <laughs> and, and then um, that really, like I said, made me realize that there are barriers that we don't see. And I think that my strategy will be just to announce, I don't see the parts that I'm bringing that might be difficult to you. Mm -hmm. So please feel free to let me know, you know, just because, again, you are not aware of them. It's like a family system. 
Yeah, that's really good. Both you and Tabitha, when you were sharing, Susan too, of just how even the oral print, like when we start becoming aware of that and then we become more sensitive to others in our group setting, you know, and the more we experience it, the more we see and we see of ourselves. So that's why this event was so good. And then sharing our own stories of what this, what it is like, you know, and, and we do have more empathy and it brings up so much for us. And so we're balancing what's stirring up inside of us as we're mm -hmm. facilitating the group and hearing from them and how do we care well for everybody as we go. So really good. That was great. I just want to add that I had done some exploration of how I was thinking just in the process of it, but it was really valuable to have to sit down and think about it because it took me a couple steps further. So I appreciate this exercise. Thank you. Yeah, it was really good. It did make us really think, didn't it? Yeah. Jody, how about you? What was it like for you? So I, um, I didn't in the last few days since going through um, the lessons go somewhere new, um, but have been a number of new places before COVID shut down all travel. Um, so that's always an eye-opening experience for me just to see how different cultures operate. And I am big on observing before taking any action. I, uh, I did enjoy the spent exercise to be completely transparent and honest. I got a little bit hung up on some things in there that I felt like, well, that doesn't seem, seem accurate, like a 15% tax rate for someone that's making less than $17,000 a year with one child. I just had to step past that. But um, it made me want even more to be an ally to someone. I got really like angered going through the exercise, reading that this woman talked to a union representative and then got fired. As a former employer, I know how illegal that is. And I just think, well, how did this happen? How did, you know, how did this, yeah, how did she get fired and this employer gets away with it? Because I just know that that's so wrong and so illegal and that should not ever happen. And in explaining the exercise to my daughter, I said, it just makes me feel like I could be a good ally to someone in some of those things. And there were, there were a couple of <clears throat> examples like that where I felt like someone just needs to be advocating for this person and helping them understand this is not legal or these are your rights or whatever. The union one stuck out in my mind, but there was one other one I'm just forgetting at the moment. So it was a very eye-opening and revealing exercise, you know, to look at the, the difficult choices that people make. At the same time, looking at it and thinking, there are other choices that we could help someone come up with in this situation. So I did enjoy that exercise. That's really great insight too. I mean, there are resources that we're then able to pass on as you start seeing this and you see how you get like, it's that internal struggle. You start feeling yourself as you're going through this exercise and then knowing there are so many other ways that you can help people and walk alongside people. And right. it's a good point. Because that's what, that's what we will talk more about that with allies too and how they can walk alongside and the resources we can give them and all too, or they bring themselves. So thanks right. for sharing. Yeah. yeah. Um, Phyllis and John, how about you? I, I probably kind of need to take a pass on this question because I, unfortunately I was uh, procrastinated on my lesson and, and uh, so that was actually completed that today. So I, I haven't given that a lot of thought. Um, I think in past experiences, probably uh, uh, experienced some short-term mission kinds of trips where you're immersed in a different kind of culture and uh, language barriers and uh, cultural things that uh, don't fit our normal day-to-day -day activities. Uh, it does teach us a lot about uh, the position that other people are in uh, when they immerse themselves into a, a different setting. So it, it does help us to be more sensitive in that regard. So. Yeah, such a good point. Be more sensitive, be more empathetic when we start realizing even the language barriers, the cultural barriers, and that's what we see. We have these different cultural barriers. Um, but then when you start seeing the financial barriers, it's like, what do we do with this? This is how mm -hmm. we're going to walk alongside people. 
So really good things. Phyllis, did you want to share anything or add um, to? You? Yeah, I guess, uh, well, as Jody said, we're in Wisconsin, so we're, COVID is rampant here. We're kind of isolated. But I, I have done that spent exercise in my class. I taught GED classes. And just a story comes to my mind of maybe be trying to be too immersed in culture. As I taught my GED classes, there were people of color, white people uh, as well. And this one particular day we were, I guess, talking about relationships. Anyway, this uh, one white girl um, said, well, I went to the police and my, my friends didn't like that I'm talking like that. And one of our persons of color said, well, we don't like it either. <laughs> so it's just like, you know, you can empathize, but some places, you know, you just want to be respectful of their culture. You're not, you're not African American, you're not Asian, you're not whatever, you're still your race and be respectful of other people. I guess is the story that I thought of when I read that exercise. Well, that's really good. Yeah, because I, I think people, some people will tend to do that and kind of their language will change depending on what culture they're in or, or, or the way they treat others. And I think even with faith and finances, when we set the stage from the very beginning of a safe place and allowing people um, to just be you no know, crosstalk, all of that, and we'll talk later about that, but good to see that. Like I'm hearing a lot about em empathy and, and sensitivity as you all are sharing. And it's so important that we know this and experience it. Lisa, do you have anything you want to share? That, I guess, in doing um, the spent, I made it 12 days. And that was um, a little alarming because I make it every day, but I don't have the situation that all these people are facing. And so it's easy to create a budget um, when you've got more to budget with and you don't have all those obstacles that I kept running into when I was doing the spent um, and having to make a choice between, you know, who eats or who goes to the doctor or, or these things. So I think in, in us as facilitating, it is so important that we do the spent test and continue to do them because not all of us have even the thought process of what we may come up with <clears throat> or come up against in budgets and things like that. So it's easy and I've done them for years. You're simple, you know, you make this much and you spend this much here, but there's just so many obstacles that don't prepare for. Right. But, um, I really, uh, when I made it to day 12, because I probably did send my pet to the Bet. And I went to the birthday and spent $10 because I want to do for these people, you know, and my family, I wouldn't have made it too far. So that was um, <laughs> something I needed to see. Yeah, that's really good because it's so easy when we're used to having the money, the finances there, and all of a sudden you're in a situation where you have $1,000 for the month. And now what? And so, and how we make those choices to get mm -hmm. to day by day. So thanks for sharing that. Eunice, we're um, wrapping up here on our experience with the spent or going to a new place. Do you want to share your experience? You know, everyone's already basically spoken and I think the sentiment's the same. Um, I was just made acutely aware of like, you know, like, as uh, Lisa was just sharing, I was thinking, like, if we have, I don't know what metaphor I'm thinking of, but, like, if I have all that money and things happen, like, things happen in life and um, I encounter similar situations, it's not so big of a deal because I can, you know, it's okay. It's a ding. But, like, if my, if how much I have is way smaller than that, then it's not dings anymore. It's, like, a big, like, decision and it takes that emotional energy, the capacity to, you know, to do all that, to think through that and have to consider so many factors. And 
it's not so there's not as much you just feel limited and in, in your choices and it just requires just a lot more energy is is what um i got the sense so that's just one thing that struck me great yeah that limited space is really a challenge well thank you all for sharing and for doing this it's been a, it was a great practice i know for even for me and carlos is going to take us into talking about practicing facilitation now absolutely well i think that that's going to wrap up week four guys it's kind of scary to think we're on to week five and then week six and uh we're almost done so well done so far i think the discussion is great your interaction online is amazing i think your guys' stories the conversations i've really enjoyed keeping up with you guys so well done so far um this week you know is actually a time where you guys uh get an assignment right in the sense of you guys will get to practice facilitate but facilitating faith and finances yourselves. Um, so what Marsh and I did uh, last week was actually break you guys up into teams. I'm gonna post that in the chat, but I'll also email that to you guys, just so you guys see who's on your team. But we have uh, three different groups, group one, two, and three. Uh, the first group is going to be John, Phyllis, and Jody. Okay, and you guys are going to facilitate session four. Uh, Catherine, Tabitha, and Lisa will facilitate session five, and then Susan, Patty, and Eunice will facilitate session eight. Um, and basically, everything you need is on the course shell. I'm going to share my screen really quick with you guys. Um, you guys, can, can you guys see my screen? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so actually, one of the first things that you'll have here is a sample facilitation video. Uh, Eugene, who's uh, the lead facilitator in the other group, you have one of his own in-person sessions. Uh, but Marsha, Dan, myself, and Eugene actually did a practice facilitation last week as well to show you how you can do it on Zoom. Um, part of why we chose to do Zoom was because I think on one end, some of you may choose to facilitate your, your workshops this fall or even in the spring on Zoom because of COVID. Um, we don't know how, you know, one, the state of your region or even the comfortability of your participants. We here in Fresno had a group who wanted to run workshops in, in our downtown area here. Um, and they were all gung-ho about putting it together into recruiting the, the you know, I think the 20 to 30 participants that had said there was interest said that they didn't want to do anything in person. Um, and it's just the reality of, of our environment now. And so take a look at that. Um, that one's actually, I think, a little bit longer, but you guys will see little tips and tricks as to how we, we, we try to do our best to make it engaging. Um, and so when we talk about facilitating on our own, here we go. You're going to record yourselves. I, I think there's really two options here. One is find a time with your group to record together uh, outside of our 9 a.m. meeting here. Uh, and so if you guys are okay, I think most of you guys had agreed to share contact information with each other. Uh, but if not, if what, what I'll do is I think separately I'll send your group of three an email, so then you guys can get the ball rolling on choosing a date. Um, like Phyllis, John, Jody, Phyllis and John might have, you guys have it pretty easy in, in getting together, but you also have Jody, right? But I think for, for the other groups, you know, you can use something like the doodle poll or you can simply correspond and figure that out. Um, and so the first option is to record over Zoom. Uh, similar to how we're doing here. If you guys have a Zoom account, uh, you're able to press record and it'll be stored in your profile as a recording. Um, if you guys haven't seen this before, but uh, when I let's see. when I record something um it'll actually be stuck into my folder here uh, so you guys will see you know my different recordings and then i have an option to download it 
Right. Um, and I think when you guys get to that point, uh, if you're having trouble uploading it, there is a section on the next, uh, I'll show it to you guys where you guys upload the video, but definitely call or text me um, and we can get that figured out pretty quickly. Um, and so in order to find what you guys are facilitating, right? So for group one, which I think is, is John, Phyllis and Jody, right? Mm -hmm. so, um, you guys have session four. And so this hyperlink here will actually bring up uh, the chapter. Let's pull that up. So you guys see unit four on your screen here? Yep. Um, and it'll tell you everything you need to prep. Uh, but I think because you guys are simply doing tasks two, three, four, A through four E, you guys might not need to do all that prep. But really the goal behind this is for Marsh and I uh, to see your guys' facilitation style and on one end exhort what you guys do really well on the other end, maybe say, hey, maybe, you know, pay attention to tone. Uh, Marsh and I were talking about this last week and, you know, my, one of my biggest faults is uh, I've, I'm naturally kind of a lazy speaker and enunciation comes a little bit more difficult. So I have to work really hard on that. Um, and so kind of like a singer, I think of using my head voice all the time when speaking. Um, and so, and there's other things that like, you know, you, we work on. And, and so I think this is kind of our opportunity in an in-person an in training, we would, you know, give you guys some comments as well as some feedback as to your facilitation style. Um, and so in the same sense, this is kind of our opportunity to do that with you online. Uh, and so you guys see task two, all right? And one, one of the things that I love about the faith and finances curriculum is, you know, it tells you about how long it'll take to facilitate that section. I will note that because there's only three of you, there will be much, much less interaction. Um, and so it very well could cut your time in half, right? But when you're facilitating, I really encourage you guys to think of actually like you're facilitating to you would as a large group rather than just, you know, the three of you. And so each, each session, you'll be able to clip, pull up your your lesson plan, your unit by just clicking on that hyperlink in the shell. Uh, and they're all there and you can download them as well. Um, and again, facilitate together the option. The other option that is, I think the, the much less desired one is you facilitate or record yourself doing your own session by yourself. If you guys can absolutely not get together. Um, but I think for, for the most part, try to get together. Um, there's only three schedules. So hopefully, you know, this week you guys will be able to get together at some point in time. The other thing that I encourage you guys to dive into are uh, techniques for dynamic facilitation. Uh, a one pager here, or actually it's a couple pages here. Uh, just best practices when it comes to facilitation. Right? Everything from posture to, to reading to facilitating uh, to even posturing as a learner and not as an expert in financial literacy. Right, so I encourage you guys to, to dive into that here. And then ultimately, when you guys finish recording, you guys will have a, an upload op, uh, option here. And then you'll simply select the file that you're going to upload from your folder and, and, and bring it in here. Um, and outside of that, that's that's really your biggest task here for next week is getting together and facilitating a session together. Um, the other thing I, I'll note is, uh, and this is a question that probably will come up towards the end of the training, is like facilitation manuals and materials for the program. Is this is something that will be a resource at the end, but you can order your, your guides separately. Uh, and so those are things that you will need for the training program. Um, and so there, I mean, not to jump too far ahead of ourselves, but there is like a little guide that teach that basically walks you through ordering guides and like in, in any faith and finances workshop, each of the participants will need a participant guide. I think they're $12 a pop, not super expensive. Uh, and so, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that here next week and making sure you guys know how to do that. And again, Marsh and I are here to help. 
So it's, it's not like, hey, I forgot where this was. Yeah, you know, all hope is lost, but we're here to help. Um, anything else you would add, Marsha, to this week's homework? No, I just think, I think that part of technique for dynamic facilitation is really good. You guys download that and look through that, especially if you've never facilitated before, because it has some really good, it has good tips and, and will help you a lot. And remember too, when you're doing this, you, especially for those that haven't done this before, you do not have to be perfect. We grow into this. So it's just like, I constantly, I've done 10 I've done 10 12 week classes now and I'm constantly learning even on our video that we did for you as a sample. It's like, oh, why didn't I do that? Next time I'll do this. Oh, I'll bring that into my class next time. So we're constantly learning, you know, so just want to encourage you with that. Um, I think we're, um, yeah, I think, I think that's it. Are we going to talk about best practices at all? Oh, Patty? Yeah. Well, yeah. I was just going to offer that if we could, um, our groups could do a quick breakout and pull together a calendar to when we could do that. If after we're done, if, if Eunice and Susan, if we want to break us up in our groups, then maybe we can sort through that. Do you guys want to take five minutes to do that? I know Eunice, you might need to bug out for class. I'm not sure if you have class this morning, but um, that's a great idea, Patty. That so are you guys okay with that I think some of you guys might be missing I know Catherine's out this week with family um, and I think she's the only one we're missing right yes so uh, um, how long does it usually take to do a you said sometimes it will be cut in half but what's a general sense of yeah, how long I, I'd say it'll take about 45 minutes to an hour okay. yeah so okay. plan for at least an hour I think for us, but you know, between the four of us, I think, you know, we eat our obviously four people a little bit longer, but we also, I think, spent 15 minutes prepping, right? So I think it ended up taking us an hour and 15 minutes. So I, I don't imagine it might take you that long, um, but yeah, <sighs> that's a good question. So here's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break you guys up into rooms. different rooms. So the first group is John, Phyllis, and the next group is Catherine, Tabitha, and Lisa. And Marsha, I'm assuming you guys will send this an email or it'll be clear in PathRight? Correct. I'll email this to all of you guys. And great point, I'll also post that on PathRight. So it's a hidden an email so think think I didn't I didn't think about doing that actually that's a good point all right guys I'm gonna open up the breakout rooms here said you could take uh, I'm gonna set it for about five minutes and then I'll see you guys here at about 9 58. so and then just click join on your room and you'll be able to join your room here There we go. Is it just us? <laughs> it's just us. We got our own room, Marsha. Uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> they, uh, okay, so that was a good suggestion actually for the future. Um, yeah. To, to get them uh, broken out. Let's see, breakout rooms. No sign, you're not, okay. You're okay. I'm gonna pause. So the habitus says when we are facilitating. And one of the things that's stands out so much for me is the parking lot. It is so important. I put, people can go on tangents. You'll see that in the techniques we gave for dynamic facilitation. But like a lot of times they'll, there will all be, there will all, I guarantee you, there will always be someone in your group, one or two people that want to dominate or, you know, take over the conversation or take you on a rabbit trail. And so what I've learned to do is when I get the folks that are really speaking long and kind of going on and on, 
trying to catch that break with them or saying to them, hey, can we hear from someone else? Let's hear from a new voice, you know, as they're going. Also with the parking lot, I literally put a flip chart up and write parking lot at the top. So if we're talking about our spending plan and expense tracking, and all of a sudden somebody's talking about the store they were shopping in, and you're trying in your head, you're trying to figure out where are they going with this? Is it going to tie it back in and say, you know what, this is so important, but let's put this on our parking lot. And if we have time at the end of class, we'll bring that back up. And if not, I'll talk to you about this when it's over. And then you get back to your, what you're working on or facilitating. Yeah. So it's not to ever shame or hurt anybody. Were you going to say something? And people can use the chat for the parking lot. Right, right. And I'm ta we're talking about like in classroom, but that's a really good idea when you're doing this online like this, because we probably will be. You can do this over here. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. And another, another thing is just, um, just kind of um, talking about creating a safe environment. And I do that every class when I start. This is a safe space. What's shared in here stays in here. We're going to make sure that everybody feels safe and and it's, I've had times where I had a gal, Carlos was kind of alluding to this earlier. She was not going to share, not going to share, finally shared about some finances and um, had the money to pay her credit card, but forgot to pay it, just put it off. And then she got a $30 fee. And one of the ladies in the class, it was my very first grassroots class. She goes, shame on you. She did this, oh, shame on you. And I died inside and I thought, okay, from this point, forward so always in that first class I say you know we don't shame anybody in here just you know we be kind to each other and just set that stage so it really is a safe place for people to come um, and then just kind of to us talking less and listening more and then clarifying like is, is this what I heard you say you know this is what I think I heard you say when someone's sharing something Carlos is there anything else um, that you of it. The, the only thing I say, like, you know, we, we always joke around and, and call it the Vegas rule, right? Because I think some folks are going to share some very sensitive information. Uh, and some of them are in the same community, you know? So if I share something personal, I, I expect Marcia to not go tell our neighbors about it, right? It, and so forth. So I think stressing the importance of, of, uh, of confidentiality within the group. Yeah, good, thanks. I think, that's all. I, I think those are good points. Okay, great. Okay, and then also we want to give you a couple additional resources and we can put those out there for you to the Pedagogy of the Oppressed by Paulo Freire. Do I say his name right? It's, <laughs> it's Paulo Freire. Okay, and then also Learning to Listen, Learning to Teach by Jane Bella. They're both really good books and, and helpful. If you haven't read them and can get them, that would be great. So with that, um, does anybody have a, a burning desire, burning question before we close in prayer? And then otherwise, Carlos and I'll stay on afterwards if you want to process a little bit more. And, and we can, um, and then also we're going to email you about those two books too. Carlos will do that, okay? Is there um, anything? Quick. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I apologize. I was just going to ask for the emails. Did we get the email addresses of each other? Did you send that? Yeah, I, I will send that after this to you guys. Um, I think if you guys gave me a thumbs up to share your email with each other earlier in the module or in the course, I think I sent that to everyone. But I, what I'll do now is email your group of three directly. Uh, if you guys haven't scheduled your time and then I'll also send a separate email with the additional resources and your, your, uh, and I think whatever else I have here. Yeah. Okay. Marsha, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. That's okay. No, we had that. So with that, we'll stick around if you guys need to stay on and talk. Okay. Otherwise let's close in prayer. Father, thank you so much for this time together. 
help us to be mindful of our time and help us to do well connecting to one another this week as we prepare for our practice facilitation. God, I pray that anybody that might be feeling anxious about any of this and all, that you would just calm them, that this will be a time that is fun and really a time for them to learn and to learn together. So we thank you for this time. Bless our day as we go out to be a blessing to you and others. In Jesus' name, amen. I have a quick question, Marcia and Carlos. Lisa and I were talking, and we're going to make a meeting on Friday. And if Catherine, I know Catherine's family is on vacation this week, but our idea was that we could somehow prepare with what you'll be sending us. And then on Friday, we're going to have like an hour and a half meeting where we sort of talk it through and then just record. Is that sufficient, do you think? Because I don't, I'm not sure exactly. Yeah, I, and I think that's that's a good point. I think scheduling that time to prep. I think honestly, like when you think about it, I think you guys will only really need about ten minutes each to yeah. facilitate. Um, and uh, again, you know, even though it says twenty minutes, like that, you know, accounts for five minutes of engagement. You know, a large group sharing, and then come back into small groups, or or vice versa. Uh, so, do we chop up the lesson between us? Uh, so each of uh, uh, each of you guys have a specific assignment, a task. Um, okay. Yeah. So like, on the first group, someone will do task two, and then someone will do ta task three, and then the, the fourth person, the person will do four A through four E, but they won't necessarily do four F, right? Um, and so definitely, again, I'll, I'll email this to you guys with your assignments, uh, but I think it's for you guys to choose who does what at the same time. Are, we, excuse me, Carlos, are you saying then where it said facilitator one, facilitator two, you know, does this, are you assigning who is facilitator one and two, where to do that? Correct. Okay. Yeah. I yeah, wanted to just, like, Carlos, just like Carlos said, your, your section may say 20 minutes, so take what it is and do it in 10 for the sake of training like this. Mm -hmm. Not for when you really lead your class, but then again, with all nine, you may have to do that. So it's really good practice if you end up doing it. And do we take over Catherine's if she's out or just leave her part for when she comes back? I'd, I'd say try to get her involved, but if you guys can't get her to, to jump on with you guys, then you know, we can look at getting Catherine to, to record her separately. But I, yeah, I definitely would encourage you. Okay. Yeah. that's a good question thanks for asking that guys because I, I think that that's a good one right I think one is how much time is this going to take I'd still say it, I'd probably take you guys about an hour but if you guys are are really good at prepping and maybe uh, doing fancier bells and whistles and facilitation like I think some of the things that we did on our end I might take you guys up to an hour and a half um, and then yes I think we we wanted to also give you guys a little flexibility to to choose who does what. And when when is it due? Like, is it due before we meet next, or do you need it more ahead of time? It's supposed to be uploaded by by Sunday. Okay. Mm -hmm. We are so print culture. We're like, give us the list. <laughs> I love it. I I'm saw that. <laughs> we are. <laughs> Just threw my cell phone number in, in the chat. I think, Marsha, if you want to throw yours in there as well. Uh, you know, I I have a bad, well, I, I, it's a good habit for me to get my email notification off on the weekends. Um, and so I normally don't check my emails till like six in the morning on Mondays. And so if you guys have a more urgent request, I say call or, or text me. Marcia, you put one too many numbers on your cell phone. Oh, wow. Okay, wait, let's try that again. Woo! Um, so definitely reach out to Marcia or I. You and guys we'll just made the biggest mistake giving us your mobile numbers. Uh, okay, there's the right one for me. Let the memes <laughs> begin. <laughs> memes and dog pictures are loud. That, that's okay. <laughs> All right, guys, anything else you can think of? So good. Great conversation today. So good. You guys are great. Yeah. Okay.
to see you. All right, friends, have a great week, and we'll talk Thank soon. Thank you. Okay, bye, Carlos. So, anything else that maybe we need to take care of before we hop off, or you feel okay? I'm I, in the right now. Yeah. Okay. Right. Have a good week. Bye. Okay.